welcome to round three of the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of August 15th. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Katherine Haleko. Hello. Nicole Eridix is away this week, and it's, so it's just us two moms of teens and young adults. Mm-hmm. When it comes to parenting, we've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. But we're still waiting for that day when we'll reach the finish line and have no further need to lay down in a dark room with a wet rag over our eyes worrying about something or other. Wednesday is complaint day here on Parenting Roundabout, and today we are complaining about home ownership again, something mm-hmm. only tangentially relating to parenting. But uh, my kids were not happy about the different things that were happening in the right. house, so there you go. There you go. Yes. We uh, talked about this last week, and the way things stood at that point, uh, my garage door opener was beeping. Catherine, was, were all your appliances behaving at the time we talked about it? Were you just talking about past disasters? I believe. Oh, yeah, because we had got the basement That's right. Done. The, basement, and, the beer explosion. Right. And right. the basement wetness. Yes. So after we had that conversation, uh, we had a garage door repairman, came, fixed it really easily. It was actually a problem with the plug we have in the garage. The thing wasn't connecting up well. So he fixed that, he gave us a new remote, which we needed. It wasn't that expensive. Great! All done. And then our refrigerator stopped working. <laughs> well, it didn't stop working so much as the freezer door would not open no matter what. Nuh-uh. Not getting in here. Not going to happen. So my my husband had been looking in the refrigerator and found that there was a big pool of water underneath like the cold cut trays at the bottom mm-hmm. and this refrigerator is not hooked up to water we don't have an ice maker we right. don't have anything so we have a pitcher that i've been saying i have been saying for weeks was leaking and my husband's <laughs> like no 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 it just kind of a little bit dripped down when i poured it no 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 it's like there's a huge puddle of water on the table underneath it no no that's just when i was pouring it so i think that water leaked from the pitcher down to the back of the refrigerator, down the back wall to under the cold cut trays, and apparently either into the freezer or around to the freezer in such a way that the freezer oh, froze. It's like sealed it up. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was sealed up. We tried everything. So <sighs> tried to find a refrigerator repairman. Nobody on Facebook would tell me a refrigerator repairman. I'm looking around. You know, PSE and G, who does our other stuff, would come or fix the refrigerator in one to two weeks. And so I finally just, I did the modern equivalent of opening the yellow pages, closing your eyes and pointing at something. Mm -hmm. I went online and I picked the website that looked the most lived in and not like something they got from appliance repair templates are us (laughs) and have filled in nothing. Right. So we had somebody come out and they took like, I guess the refrigerator repairman equivalent of a crowbar and pried the freezer open. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, melted all the ice that was in it, did, you know, whatever needed to be done so that it would close and seal again. And uh, a little more expensive that time, but for right this moment, everything is working. So tag, you're it, Catherine. Yeah, so naturally, as soon as that happened (laughs) over here, um, our stove stopped working. So basically, one of the burners... My husband used it, and then he could not shut it off. Like, oh, no. Just the way you could not open your freezer, he could not shut off oh, this no. one burner. So he had to... Um, and this is gas? A gas stove? It's a gas stove. Oh, yikes. So you he had to... just leave that. He had to shut off the gas. You know, oh, he had to... He had to disconnect the whole stove from the gas uh-huh. so that um, we would not die. So... <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, you know, of course we couldn't use the stove at all. Um, so he called for a repair and a guy was at, at the first person. They weren't going to be able to come until September 15th. <laughs> so that is not helpful. Yeah, this is not helpful. Like almost a month at the time. Um, with no with no stove you know as it was the stove was pulled out from the wall so i cleaned under it and around it that was wow. delightful um now, and is this a stove and oven combo like a range yes okay. so 
you know, so we have a toaster oven and a microwave, and and that's how we were <laughs> surviving. And my husband was like, "I'm gonna get out my instant pot and my, you know, like we have all these other appliances." Like pioneer days, in yes, house. exactly. So, it, you know, so this this person couldn't come for three weeks or whatever. So then he found somebody else. Um, th- the the uh, range is a Samsung, um, so he found a a Samsung person, and he actually described over the phone what the problem was, and the guy said, "I know what this mm-hmm. is, and it just needs you just need one part. Um, so let me order that part, and I'll <laughs> let you know." you know, when I get it and then I'll come and fix it. So we were like, okay, you know, great. But that sounds we unexpectedly have, promising. We have no idea when this is yeah, going to be. Yeah. So, so that at that point was when I was like, well, I'm ordering myself an electric kettle because <laughs> I can't, you know, keep making tea in the microwave. Right. So, and we, we can get back to the kettle because yes. there's more to that. But anyways, so then after like, a couple days, the um, the guy calls back. He's like, "Well, I can't get that part. It's not made anymore, and what? you know, any kind of like substitute or you know, alternative. I just don't want. I don't trust it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and this is gas we're talking about. Yeah, so, yeah. so we're like, yeah, you know. And he, the guy's like, I'm sorry, but. The whole stove is done, you know. For want of a part, for want the of stove one, is lost. the whole stove. So. And oven, which is innocent in all of this, and yet, correct, yeah. right? the the whole The whole thing. So then, my husband gets online and starts looking for a new stove, <laughs> and he's like, oh, "All of these are." Like they stick out, you know, like yeah. he measured the stove and, and as it is the it's stuck out a couple inches from like where the counters mm-hmm. were. Right. Or maybe yeah. an inch. I don't know, whatever. And he's like, all of these are like five inches too big. <laughs> and, and this was like reminiscent of, I don't know if you remember when we had the washing machine yes. and we have it built into cabinetry and there was not a single washing machine in the world <gasps> that would fit behind this cabinetry. And now we thought we were, like, going through this again. Um, But then he – and I kept saying, call up Lowe's, call up Home Depot, like, ask somebody. Say, we need something shallow and this – and I can't find it. Um, He's like, I'm just – I'm looking – you know, he's doing the equivalent of, like, I don't need to ask for directions. So, (laughs) finally, he – not on a, a retail site, but on some kind of like DIY thing. Yeah. He figured out that the measurement goes to the end of the handle, uh-huh. right? So where you where you pull open this the uh-huh. oven, um, that is what. So it turned uh-huh. out that we didn't need a weird size. We just <laughs> needed a normal size. <laughs> And now you just keep saying prayers until that thing is installed. Yes. That this is correct. Which is supposed to happen today. So Wow. I know. I was amazed. Is it gonna be my turn again then? Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. What's get gonna ready. Be <laughs> well no, wait, I had I had two th- I had like two or three things. You've got yes. you've got a few more things to break before it's my turn again. Well, I don't know, because I had the basement. <laughs> yeah. That was before my things. I Yeah. Well I mean, anyway. Playing by fire to go back with this topic, but right. uh so, but so, it did. The, the the plus of it all is that you did finally get an electric kettle, which you've been I, wanting to get for a while, right? Right. So I got a kettle, and the because I do feel that with all the gadgets that we have, uh, I would actually use <laughs> the electric kettle. <laughs> like I do not use a lot of the things that we have, mm-hmm. um, but I really thought that I would use an electric kettle, but I didn't want it because. We already have so much stuff Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to have to like make room for it. And, but the, (laughs) you know, at the point where I thought I was going to be going like weeks (laughs) (laughs) without a proper burner on the Uh stove, um, I broke down and 
bought a kettle. Nice. So it is a Cuisinart uh, perfect temp uh, electric kettle. And so it comes, it has like, it doesn't just like on off, which is most uh-huh. of the ones I've seen. This one has, you can choose, are you drinking green tea, oolong, black? Oh <laughs> because it does it to a different temperature depending on what kind wow. of tea you have. So that's impressive. It's pretty special. It's made for you. Yes. Yes. So. I, I heat my water for tea in my Keurig coffee maker, which is probably anathema. Yeah. I mean, that that's not a bad I do that in hotels, but the problem for me is that then it does have a little tinge of coffee flavor to it. <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. Yes. <laughs> it is a bad thing. <laughs> and uh, your your new stove is going to have certain features that one might not expect? Yes. So it's the same the same one that we have like you know another samsung whatever but it has wi-fi and voice commands <laughs> so you can yell at it apparently know what the voice commands are. is there a list of them when you get the instructions you have to tell me what all they are because i would like them to be like please don't break right and then it won't break or be like thanksgiving is coming if you need to be on your best behavior <laughs> It's right. <laughs> Don't break down now. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, make the kids dinner. I don't feel like it. And yes. Just automatically do it. Right. I don't know. I mean, as he was browsing, he's like, oh, so many of these ovens have a Sabbath feature, which like is sort of like a delayed start. And it, it turns out I knew that our oven had that. Like you can, yeah, you can put something in it and say, "Turn this on at X time." So, huh? I wonder what is the Wi-Fi for? Is it so like you can preheat when you're not home? I guess, but that sounds like a bad idea. I it don't does. Do that. <laughs> or turn the turn the oven off at a certain time if you're from a remote location. If you're just right. sitting in front of the TV and you want to do stuff in the kitchen, you can just right. That's what it feels like to me that you're. I mean, like my my husband has the the big smoker, you know that he yeah. that he puts meat in sometimes, and that he has a um, temperature sensor that you put in whatever meat you're smoking, and then you can check the temperature from an app, so you don't have wow. to keep going back and forth outside to where the smoker is. But that's a little bit different from yeah, you know your. <laughs> Your oven that presumably is in your kitchen. Can you ask, can you use the voice command to say, are the cookies done yet? Yeah. Are they done now? <laughs> Maybe they're done now. Can you take a look, please, oven? Right. Because I'm busy watching yeah. a show, like, I don't want to flip on the light and peek in right. 50 times. So <laughs> this way you can just let me know. Can you, can you put those on a newspaper for me, please, and put the next batch in? Thanks. <laughs> So, well, I'll let you so know. So many things with Wi-Fi. Your sh- what was I it? Know. You had a Wi-Fi in your shower? That was Bluetooth, yes. Bluetooth. Oh, okay. That that doesn't work anymore, but we have a replacement. Oh. We're now waiting for the um, electrician to come install ah, it. Ah, so there's another thing. Yes. That is sitting in a box in my dining room. Wow. So. It's just an endless delight of... Mm-hmm. Uh, how did we get those ten thousand dollars we were talking about on Monday? Is somebody right. handing that out? Mm-hmm. We just we would invest it in a savings plan for when our appliances right. go out one by one. Mm-hmm. You asked me how old the stove was, and I said uh-huh. eight years, but I was wrong. It's only six years old. Oh, for goodness' sake! Yeah, so it's my very... appliances are four years, and I was already steamed at that. Yeah. Uh, they're already – I mean, I I believe the problem with the refrigerator is, in fact, our – User error. From the water, from the mm. leaky pitcher. Right. Which did I say I mentioned a bunch of times was leaking? <laughs> yep. So the, the handle was coming off it. We had to duct tape the handle back on. But he mm-hmm. was determined to keep using this Brita pitcher forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's massive. It holds a lot of water. So when it leaks – Right. But maybe it was something else. <laughs> Definitely could have. Anyway, well, 
That's it for today's round three, and we hope that that's it for the appliance breakage update for a while now. Mm-hmm. Let's, that's, we're done with this topic. We're done. <laughs> Everything's done. Everything's good. Nothing's yep. going to break. All set. Again. All set. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Tune in tomorrow when we'll obsess about back to school season and then on Friday to see what we've come up with for our Roundabout Roundup picks this week. Find all our episodes at parentingroundabout.com and talk back in the comments there on our Facebook page or on Twitter where you'll find us at Roundabout Chat. <laughs>